Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So the inevitability of mathematics has caught up with Frugal Tiger. I had one of my largest losing days that I've had in a very long time. I am down over $7,000, um, give or take, on my main trading account that you guys see on camera. The hot run of cards that I had these past few weeks have come to an end and I'm holding on to quite a few losses. It didn't help that I traded very poorly and it didn't help that the market sold off a lot harder than I thought it would have. Everyone keeps calling this the Teflon market, but the Teflon market may be coming to an end. I want to quickly run through some trades. I just want all of the money. So the first name I want to run through is Peloton. I have not closed out the position yet, but I'm holding on to about $1,200 worth of losses on Peloton. I picked up the shares on Thursday and one of the main reasons I picked up the shares is they've been dipping down quite a bit. I bought it in a little bit more size than I would have recommended based on uh, the strategy I'd mentioned last week. But um, I picked up about 600 shares of Peloton. Uh, two of the main reasons is Wall Street loves it. I don't think it's that great of a name, but Wall Street loves it. And Wall Street's opinion matters a lot more than me. Uh, a lot of analysts buy ratings. But beyond that, the one thing I've noticed is the amount of money they've spent on advertising. Don't forget the power of advertising. Even at a tremendous cash burn, if you can get this product into the hands of a lot of people, it's still a viable product. That's the reason I like the name, even if they're burning a lot of cash. Um, so that's why I purchased the stock. I might hold on to it a little bit longer. Let's wait and see. It's a swing trade for me, so don't judge me. I've had Peloton for the last two days and as you can tell I'm getting my face torn off. The next trade I want to talk about is Pinterest. I've been holding on to this for a while. I honestly should have sold this a while back. Having said that at its current price point I don't see it dipping too much lower. I've been slowly buying more and more shares into it. I'm holding 1500 shares right now but that's 1500 too many. I might have to close this one out at a loss. We'll see. Having said that, the majority of the sell-off that happened, it was at 24.20 uh, yesterday. It's at 22.70, 22.80 uh, today. So I took a huge beating on that, 1,500 shares, down 3K on that name alone. I'm losing money on Pinterest. I've been holding this for a while. Look at these losses here. Terrible swing trade. Uh, we'll figure out what to do with that. I still like the name though, um, and the main reason I do like the name is they have a lot of exposure outside the U.S., um, and for that reason, I think they might be getting a little bit more beat up uh, because of the coronavirus. Names like Facebook, Instagram, those are big in the US. Pinterest is a lot bigger outside the US. I still think the name could go higher from here, holding on to it for now. The next big losing stock of the day and probably uh, my biggest F up of the day was Nvidia. So I watched Nvidia, um, it was around $298 a share. I had missed out on an enormous amount of this rally on Nvidia. I was gonna wait till after earnings to decide whether to buy it or not. And it just rallied super hard after earnings. I had a little bit of FOMO, I bought Nvidia. I realized it was gonna get sold off. I watched the charts and I quickly took off the position. I had 200 shares, so $60,000 worth of Nvidia stock. Let's get rid of that. So that was my first trade on NVIDIA. Later on in the day, I saw it drop much lower. It was around $294 where I was thinking about buying call options on NVIDIA for expiration date today. Uh, I bought it at a strike price of 295, ended up having to close that at a loss. That sucked. I'm out almost $700 on, on the options and another uh, $600 ish on Nvidia stock. So down $1,300 on that name alone. I've also lost money on this call option on Nvidia for about $700. So yeah, Nvidia uh, was a big loser for the day today. The next swing trade I want to talk about is Cisco. I have a lot of regrets with Cisco and the main one is I could have sold it yesterday at a profit. For some reason, I had decided not to. I uh, and. I had thought the market was going to be up today, even though it's been down the last few Fridays. And I was like, if the market's up, Cisco's going to go up a, maybe a little bit better than the market right now. It's been down against the market for the past few days. Turns out I was wrong. Ouch. I could have sold it for a $200 profit yesterday. I am stuck holding a $500 loss on it at this present moment. With Cisco, I actually had an opportunity to sell this yesterday, but like a donkey. 
I didn't, and I'm holding on to that as well. I could have been in the green $200. Um, I am holding on 800 shares. I, it's not about the loss. It's about how much capital I have tied up on Cisco. Um, that's more than I would like. Jim Cramer had recently this morning uh, talked about the stock Chewy. I've actually never heard of the stock before, but Jim Cramer recommended it. And I've been losing money on all of Jim Cramer's trades. I had thought this trade, this trade was gonna be the one. Jim, you were gonna make me money. And it turns out I uh, bought into Chewy and it just starts dropping immediately from the time I bought in. What's going on, Jim Cramer? Huh? Anyway, uh, this isn't a good time for jokes, uh, but yeah, I'm stuck money on Chewy as well. I think I'm down like $600 on that one as well. So uh, overall, uh, been getting literally beat up. And once again, I was caught off guard because I was expecting an afternoon rally uh, that never took place. And I had put a lot of size into the market. This was a recommendation by Jim Cramer. I think I bought it right around here. I was expecting a bounce and that bounce never came. I'm not gonna sell it. I don't think, you know, if we look at the actual chart, uh, mainly because I can afford to hold this, but I don't think this is the worst uh, price point to hold it. It had a huge bearish day. The overall trend might be down, but the following day um, when a stock is this bearish, you oftentimes see a green candle. I think there'll be an opportunity for me to sell it for a profit in the near future. So there's a whole bunch of uh, additional trades that I'd done um, in the past two days that resulted in both profits and losses. But those were the big ones that made up a sizable amount of my account drop and valuation. So the key point that I wanted to make through this video is there seems to be a lot of YouTube day traders and other traders that uh, show you that uh, they're making money all the time. I just watched a video on someone who made uh, you know, a six figure trade on something. And uh, it was, from my experience, I will tell you this, I think they're lying to you about that. I'm not gonna go into details who it was or what it was, but uh, losses are a part of the game. I am down 7,000, as I keep saying over and over again, and it sucks. Uh, so, um, you know, even I take losses. Uh, I take losses all the time. None of my trades are that large in individually, but combined, uh, when you look at like seven, eight, nine trades, they make up um, that I'm constantly going in and out of. Uh, you know, I'm trading pretty large sizes in multiple different names throughout the day. So uh, a bad day like today um, could result in a pretty hefty drop for me. I did end up losing money and that's a part of the day trading life that other people do not show you. So I hope you learned something. I have to keep this short. I need to get this edited ASAP. Otherwise, YouTube's going to punish me as they have been. Um, and I'll talk to you all soon.